Good afternoon. My name is Paul Kilgore, and I'm here from Wayne State University, and today we're going to talk about Legionnaire's disease. I'm here now with Mr. Tom Burns. Tom, thank you very much for being here. You're welcome, Dr. Kilgore. And Tom, I know that you've had a recent experience with Legionnaire's disease. That is correct. In fact, my symptoms, I first noticed them either uh, the night of July 7th or the morning of July 8th. July 8th, the morning day became a little bit more pronounced. Uh, the, the evening before, I was just feeling a little bit run down. I thought it was because I was on vacation for the previous week and I just had too much sun and fun. Mm -hmm. um, so the next morning, the morning of July 8th, I was feeling a little bit more tired than I should. Mm -hmm. I was sweating profusely. So on day one, the prominent signs and symptoms that you had were really, really extreme fatigue and feeling really run down with a high fever. That is correct. And these continued, mm -hmm. the shaking continued throughout the day unless I was dying from the heat. Okay. And then day two, what signs and symptoms did you think of that you really felt were continuing or were new? Day two, I was still getting hot and cold, hot mm -hmm. and cold, and I was sweating unbelievably. Mm -hmm. um, about that time, also, I noticed that when I did get up, I was a little bit tired. Mm -hmm. But two, uh, uh, Saturday into Sunday, they both kind of remained the same. Uh, I continued to get weaker. I did not want to get up off the couch, mm -hmm. um, sweating sweating more, mm -hmm. I was drinking fluids, I had no appetite, I was drinking slim fast to replace calories. Mm -hmm. So Sunday, day three, and then into Monday, day four, you continued to have the sweats, the high fever, the chills, and then you had fatigue as well, and your appetite really wasn't up to par at all. That is correct. At nine o'clock in the morning when my doctor's office opened, I went in to see um, as a walk-in patient. Mm -hmm. And that was a clinic in Plymouth mm -hmm. where I had a high fever at that time still and I was still shaky and I was, I had a, when I walked from my car to the building, maybe a hundred steps, I had to catch my breath when I, before I went in the door. Mm. I was becoming weaker. So um, by day four, you were actually sick enough to go to the doctor. Yes. And you really felt that something was really wrong. Yes, I went in to see the doctor he took my temperature, my blood pressure, took a look at me, asked me what I'd been doing the previous, previous few days, mm -hmm. diagnosed me with heat exhaustion, mm -hmm. and told me to drink more liquids and sent me home. Mm -hmm. So you, at that time, then that was day four still, Monday evening yep. you rested at home and yep. tried to recuperate. Yes, all day Monday I drank Gatorade mm -hmm. and rested. Okay. Um, slept pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesday morning, which was the the fifth day, um, so now I don't feel any better. Mm -hmm. My daughter, who is a nurse, is in town. Mm -hmm. and she told me that um, they should have drawn blood, they should have did a urine test, they should have done something besides um, the outside vitals that they did. Mm -hmm. After she walked away, I coughed up some blood. This was the first time I had coughed up blood, and this was Tuesday morning, but I knew that wasn't a good sign, and mm -hmm. it was red. Right. It wasn't, uh, there was no doubt about it in my mind, it was blood. That must have scared you. Yes, yes. Uh, it scared me a lot because at that point I knew that I didn't have the flu, mm. Um, mm. and I didn't think it was any kind of gastrointestinal blood. Right. And so I knew that um, whatever it was, I'm going to the emergency room shortly. Yeah, and you knew by that time that this blood was coming from your lungs. That is correct. Okay, so let's see. From the first day to day five, you were progressively getting quite sick. Yes. And so you had high fever, chills, you weren't eating well, you felt very, very tired, and then you began to have the cough, which progressed to the point where you were actually coughing up blood. Correct. And then after that, you actually, I think, got winded and, and you had trouble walking, right? Um, you know, I had been getting progressively more winded um, up to that point, but I, I have attributed it to the flu or just being sick. Mm -hmm. When you're sick, you don't have the energy. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I felt when I went up to the top of the steps that I was gonna pass out if I tried to walk anywhere. Okay. When I told my wife that I was gonna go to the emergency room, I was getting winded, getting the words out. Mm. And this so, was on 
on Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. This was still Tuesday prior to going to the emergency room. Okay. So um, I got cleaned up. I let her take me to the emergency room. They did an EKG, drew some blood, urine test, uh, things like that, blood pressure, uh, some of the normal stuff, some of the not so normal, yeah. and did an x-ray. Right. And um, told me they were going to admit me that I had pneumonia. So um, they admitted me and they started a, a round of antibiotics intravenously, mm -hmm. which burned a little bit going in, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. So uh, this went on, and maybe it was all in my imagination, but I began to feel better uh, almost immediately after they stopped the antibiotics. I'm not saying I felt great, but mm -hmm. I felt better. Okay. The nurse came back in the room and she was dressed in plastic and she was wearing a plastic uh, face mask and she said, you know, oh, you don't have pneumonia, you have uh, Legionnaire's disease. We're very happy that you went in and that's great information. So many health professionals and, and folks can really understand what your experience was. So I thought maybe now we could talk a little bit about some of the things that may be important exposures in your experience um, that could be risk factors for Legionnaire's disease. Okay. So uh, in your home, uh, before you were feeling ill or sick, were you using uh, a room or other kind of humidifier? Um, no, we do have a humidifier, but we turn it off in the summer and drain the water from it. Okay. And then at night to help you sleep or during the day at all, do you use what's called the CPAP machine? No, do not use one. Okay. And in your home or around your house, uh, do you have any kind of decorative fountain or other um, park nearby with a fountain? Um, no, we, we, there is a, a, a township. Uh, I live in Plymouth Township and they do have a, a a uh, fountain in the hall in the town square, but I don't. You hadn't uh, been near there. I hadn't there. been near there. Okay. In the past, have you ever been told that you had any kidney or liver disease? Um, not so much disease as um, I'm plagued with kidney stones occasionally. Okay. And do you remember ever in the past, say two or three months, taking any high dose steroids or prednisone of any type? No, nothing okay. like that. And, and you've never been treated recently for any type of cancer? No. Okay. And, and then thinking back over the past several years, um, had you ever uh, been a smoker of any type? I smoked heavily until I was about 26 years old. Um, slowed down quite a bit after that okay. and quit smoking basically at about 30 years of age. Well, you know, it's very, very helpful to think back to the history and and one of the things that we know about Legionnaire's disease is that people who are 50 years of age and older tend to be at higher risk for the disease. We also know that people who have been current or former smokers may be at increased risk of Legionnaire's disease. And in fact, we also know that people who may have had kidney or liver disease in the past or cancer could be at increased risk of Legionnaire's disease. Well, that's very important information, and uh, Mr. Burns, we're very, very grateful for your time here today, and we look forward to talking with you again in the future. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much.